John, you asked me to make a video about how to be frugal, and I'm going to do just that. So let's say that you make roughly $1,500 a month after taxes. Now, to simplify everything so that we can talk in concepts of percentages, let's divide that by 15. So now you have $100. That $100 represents the previous $1,500. And with this $100, you have to buy everything you need. That includes food, water, and shelter. Your food costs are about 9% of your income, or $9 of your 100 Your water is the cheapest necessity at 3%. However, your housing and remaining utilities cost another 42% of your income. That's right. For just the bare minimum, you have to spend roughly 54% of your income. Assuming that you make less than $20,000 a year and have no ownership of a house, a garden, or a freshwater lake. So that leaves you with $46 that you can save. However, it isn't that easy. You might need other things to ensure that you keep that money coming in, like a car, an internet connection, or a cell phone. Okay, so let's say that you live 20 miles from your work. First off, that was a bad choice. A frugal person's best friend is proximity. Why? Because cars are expensive. Cars are roughly another 20% of a low income person's expenses. That's another 20 bucks of your $100 gone every month just for the car. And you may think, well, my car payment and my car insurance are lower than 20% of my income and I make $20,000 a year. Don't forget, cars have hidden fees and gas and required maintenance. And even if your car is paid off, then you still have to calculate how much it'll cost each month to buy that car again once the old one breaks down. So now you can save 26% of your income. Well, there's still the cell phone, that's minus $3. So now you can save 23%, and the internet's another two, so now you're down to 21%. But wait, there is more. Remember, you're human, and you're imperfect. You are influenced by your friends who may want you to spend money on some game or movie, and you may see an ad for a product that fills you with a burning desire that makes you yell, I got to have it! So how can you avoid these expenses? Simple. Allow yourself to indulge in what you can afford. This means that if you have friends or family that try to persuade you to spend money on things you don't need, then you have to limit them in your life. Changing spending habits isn't just an economical choice. It's a lifestyle one that will affect all aspects of your life. So back to what I was saying about indulging in things that you can afford. Basically what I'm saying is you need to regulate your entertainment costs. The human mind hates boredom, and it's smart. Smarter than you. <laughs> Get it? Because it's you. Kind of. Um, if you accept boredom in your life, your mind will begin to wear down your willpower. If you think you have infinite willpower, guess what? Nope, you don't. You see, willpower is a finite thing. It can run out, leaving you an overeating, overspending, slothy, sloth of a person. But it will recharge over time. Think about it this way. Your willpower is like an energy bar in a video game. Every time you resist a cookie, or choose not to buy an awesome new thing over there, you use a little bit of your energy bar, or willpower points. Now these willpower points will recharge, it just takes time. Okay, so I'm a little off topic, but it was important to understand that. So if you can't just force yourself to be frugal by sheer will, then what are you to do? Well, you gotta keep yourself entertained. Hank Green over at Vlogbrothers did an excellent video about the cheapest ways to entertain yourself. However, there was one thing he didn't mention. While he did mention the price for cable television, and that the average American spends 36 hours a week watching TV, he left out alternate, cheaper ways to watch TV. I'm going to just go out on a limb here and say that cable television is a huge waste of money. And it's not nearly as economical as, let's say, Netflix, which you can buy right now for $8. Not eight dollars of our hundred. No, out of our hundred, it would just be fifty cents. So after Netflix and the internet, you are now at twenty dollars and fifty cents. But let's think about the picture we just painted, shall we? You are a person who lives in a place about twenty miles from work. You apparently never leave your room except to go to your job. You watch Netflix all day, and you watch your income in your bank account pretty slowly rise. Not that great of a life. So let's change it to increase our savings and quality of life. First things first, move. 
Let's get you closer to work. This should lower your gas and maintenance fees. So let's say that knocks off about four bucks a month. So you're at twenty-four fifty. Not a bad increase. However, I bet we can do more. You now live about two point five miles from where you work. So you decide to buy a bike and ditch the car altogether. You buy the bike for about $150 or $3 of your hundred. That gets rid of the remaining 16, so you're all the way up to 4050, but no way. You're burning more calories. So that means you have to buy more food to compensate. Your food costs go nearly up 3% of your income, and that bike was another half percent because you still got to do maintenance and buy another one once the other one breaks down. So now you're saving about 37% of your income. However, let's imagine that we can do more. Why is our housing costs so high? $42 of our hundred? <laughs> no. Here we have a bunch of options. You could decide to keep the car and live in it, but then where will you put your address for you know taxes and your employer? So let's just say that's out. Unless, no, unless, no. How about, okay, how about roommates? One roommate cuts your rent in half. Two roommates cuts it by two thirds. You need more. Three, four, five, six. Okay, let's just leave that too. Now, it's not a perfect two thirds because your utilities don't go down that much. Only the rent is cut perfectly, depending on the landlord. So let's just say that you get your housing to about $19 of your hundred, putting you saving about 60% of your income. That's damn good. So now you're a guy who lives in a house with two roommates. You bike to work to stay healthy, and then you go home and you watch Netflix all day. And then you watch your bank account rise pretty quickly. Not a terrible situation, but it's still not that great of a life. So how can we improve from here? Frugally speaking, there isn't much more we can do, but what we can do is make our future look brighter. How? Investing. I'm not just talking about investing in stocks or bonds. I mean, that's part of it. But you also need to invest in yourself. This will ultimately increase your income, which means that you can have a great life, save and continue to invest, and then retire to do whatever the hell you want. So first off, investing in stocks and bonds. This is a topic for another video, but for now, I recommend an IRA or a mutual fund to get things started. So let's just say you take $3 of your 100 and throw it into that. So now you're saving 57% of your income. So how can you invest in yourself? Well, college is one, but it isn't very economical. A university will eat remaining 57% and then some. A community college is more realistic, but it's still pretty expensive at about $30 of your 100 Luckily, government grants like Pell Grants can help you eat some of that cost. It's hard to say just how much, but just to be safe, let's say it's about half. So your cost with books is about $15 a month. That's pretty affordable. Although, how are you going to get to class? You sold your car, dummy. Oh, oh, I know. Online classes. But wait, some degrees require you to take a few on-campus classes in order to get that lab expertise you need. Darn. Well, there's always the bus, assuming that it's available. Let's just say that you decide college just isn't an option right now. Well, what about certifications? You buy your book, study, take the test when you feel ready. Perfect. It's cheap, about 2% of your income, and it can get you an interview to that better job. So let's look at the picture of who you are again, shall we? You have two roommates, you ride your bike to get to work, and you're now studying after work to get a certification into a better job. You're watching Netflix when you're bored, and you're saving over half your income. However, you're kind of alone. You don't seem to have any friends, so you're just kind of sitting there watching Netflix all day and studying. So let's say that you decide to take, you know, 10% of your income and put it towards things like movies, games, and whatever the hell else you want. So that leaves you with 45% of your income, and now you can even get out and go do things. Your life is pretty good now. Your future's looking bright, and your worries are starting to melt away. It's not a bad life. Oh, I forgot one last thing. Loans. Loans cost you more than the actual value of the item that you're buying. So a house, it may cost you another 10 grand or a car, another thousand. So if you can, avoid them because personal loans are basically the opposite of investments. They make your income less valuable and depreciate over time. So unless you really need them or can somehow turn them into investments, then don't bother. Now, not everyone will be able to save like this. Some people will make far less money, some much more. Some need that car or college to get where they need to go. But the point of this video was to get you thinking about how you need to approach your life when it comes to saving. You have to consider cutting things that you don't really need and find ways to make the things you do need cheaper. If you want to have a better life than the one you have now, then you have to sacrifice so that you can invest in your future. Frugality is what you want. Oh yeah, remember how I said you don't own a house, a garden, or a freshwater lake? Well maybe. After you save enough, 
you could just go ahead and buy one of those things, you know, to save even more. See ya, John. If you have any questions, please ask in the comments below and I will answer them in a follow-up video. Also, feel free to like, share, or subscribe this video. It will really help us out. Thank you.